all goes. Oh, I'm going well. How about I'm Simon Wong. How are you? Uh, good, thank you, Simon. Ah. Uh, uh, good. Uh, yeah, under this uh, Corona uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, please look after yourself. Take care. Everybody's the same. We sh we should look after ourselves yeah. and be happy. Can you see me? I'm yes, I can. I can. Yeah. I can. So the there are three people here. I can't see. Probably they haven't turned on their 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 videos. Yeah. But other people, good, good. Hey, hello. Hi. I'm seeing somebody in the background. <laughs> she she's not interested, but she should be. She should be interested. Yeah, well, we will see. I will I will try to interest her. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to share screen in order to. Okay, share share screen. And uh, how to do that here? Yeah. And uh, this one. Right there, somewhere. Okay, so let me get back to my 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 Zoom window. Okay, uh, do you guys see see the see my presentation screen? Yeah, Yellow River. Yellow River, yes. Okay, good, great. Okay, uh, let's get a start first, and uh, because it is streaming online, so probably there will be other people, uh, watching it outside of this. At the moment, there are two concurrent viewers on YouTube. <laughs> one one is me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mary. <laughs> Okay, let's start. Now, um, Yellow River is one of the largest river in, in... Let me just see what I can... Yeah! La Yellow River is one of the largest river in, in China and supposed to be our uh, mother, motherland uh, where we, we get started. To begin with, I, th this time I will try to show you a cantata, a, a music. The, the whole cantata itself is has uh, eight movements. I'm not going to show you, to show you the whole eight movements, otherwise it will take up the whole whole hour. <laughs> the the uh, Yellow River cantata is about forty five minutes long, but I'm not going to show you the whole thing. I will only show you three movements, and with somebody using a drum to take pictures of Yellow River. So we will see Yellow River's uh, scenery plus a little bit of music. Because it's music, so I'm going to mute most people's <laughs> microphone not to <laughs> bother everybody with other noises. Let me see whether I can mute your, your microphones. And then we'll start playing that. Uh, how do I do that? Because we will... No, I don't know how to do that. Yes. Albert, yes. Albert, yeah. Down, down in the bottom left, bottom left, yeah. there's a little up arrow. Click on that and you have some options. Okay. Let me see what I... Um, I... I think I have to get this screen larger. Enter full screen. And then, mm, no, can't find that. But anyway, please keep quiet then. <laughs> we will. No problem. Okay. Um, the picture on the right is the composer. Um. Oh, hang on, I can't. I've only got our Facebook screen here and uh, um, who's, who is speaking, please? I'm Mary. Oh, Mary, okay. Um, and I'm not sure how to... Um, Turn off your 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 speaker, your your microphone. You move down your, your, your interface on the lower left-hand corner. There should be something like a mic. And then you click on that one, you will see a cross, a, a red cross over it. That means your mic is mute. 
Then you no, want I've, to. I've, I've, that, that's all fine. Um, I'm just. Um, uh, my screen is showing with we three um, on the um, far right, and it cuts out half of the. Oh, I can't see the composer. So I'm just looking. I think if I minimise that. Ah. Aha. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Anyone any problem as well? No. No. Okay. No. We are all learning, so <laughs> so we have to bear with each other. Okay. We are, okay. Okay. Now, um, the music is composed in 1939, so it's during the time when the the Sino Chinese, uh, Sino Japanese war was ongoing. So let's have a little. Then the arrangement is, as I said, has eight movements. We are going to show, uh, show the third, the first, the third, and the fifth. <laughs> okay, three movements. Okay, let's start.
Okay, the next movement is coming in now. It is a choir. It, there will be some singing here. Yes, we are the sons of the Dian
Okay, coming up is another movement. Ah. Okay, sorry, it's a bit long, but I hope that you can feel a bit of the of the uh, look of the the yellow river. Let me see how can I get everybody able to speak again, so that you can. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Sorry, I yeah. I mute everybody, but I'm now going to unmute everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Hello. Yes, I can speak. Hey, Albert. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. I've no, been to. Uh, have you been to Tiger Leaping Gorge, where the river goes through? No, I I haven't been go to the Yellow River myself. Uh, probably I have passed some of the cities around, but I haven't really be be at the Yellow River itself. But let's look at some of the ge geography of the Yellow River first. Okay. So. <laughs> We, we, my wife and I stayed at uh, Tiger Leap Gorge for a while. Oh, right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now the Yellow River. Uh, probably, I, I need to move my second screen so that I can see see the second screen easier. Um, you it start from the Qinghai uh, uh, Plateau and then we will run it through to different areas of uh, Inner Mongolia and then going back to uh to the um, Bao Hai, going out from there. The Yellow River itself is called Yellow because as you had seen in the video just moments ago, it is yellow. 
the reason <coughs> the, re the reason that it is yellow is because uh it has passed through a region with a lot of uh Laos. Uh, Laos is a type of a uh, yellow soil. The yellow soil mm. is uh, very easy to break off from weathering. Mm. So like because sorry, is it like a clay? Yeah, yeah it like is. It's, it's even worse than clay. It is very loose. Oh, okay. Mm. So now because it's loose, also means it will be very good for farming, but. Over the thousands of years, um, the farming there have stripped the whole uh, Laos plateau almost barren. So mm. there was no vegetation cover and therefore it was very bad. Every time it rains, a lot of this Laos is being washed to this river. But it is the second longest river in China after the Yangtze River. Uh, it is the sixth longest river in the world, with about uh, five thousand kilometers long. It start with from the Xinhai province of the western China, and then flows uh, basically through eight, uh, nine different uh, provinces before it's empty into the Bohai uh, Sea. The Yi River uh, total drainage is. Uh, about seven hundred and ninety-five thousand square kilometers. So it's covered quite a lot of area, and and therefore it feeds a lot of people. But at the same time, um, it always floods. The flooding in Yellow River is almost is called the um China's sorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. Because uh, we can understand that the with that amount of silt flowing down the river, therefore the river bed is very easy to be clogged. Once the river bed is clogged, then it will uh, uh, spill over the boundary and then becomes a flood. Over the the over the years, over that that long long duration. People has been building the banks higher and higher until such point now that the river bed is actually higher than the farmland nearby. Let me see how can I mute everybody's uh speaker so that we we got a little bit less noise. But so if you want to speak, you raise your hand and I will unmute you. Mm. That would be a better because otherwise I we are seeing hearing kind of a bit of um noises coming from different people's uh and meal and meal meal sorry i'm muting everybody okay okay that's better now the the uh the the river feeds a lot of people and over the years it also kills a lot of people so it is also called the uh river of sorrow for for china and that's exactly why you when we pay the uh, Yellow River Kontaka, you will hear some very sad moment in, in the middle. The, the second woman I'm, I show you is very sad. Is talking about how a woman uh, is uh, complaining about he, her husband being killed by the Japanese. So that's basically the anti-Japanese song at that time. But anyway, the back to river itself. The river itself is one of the main uh, river that the Chinese um, have recorded history. So these are some of the numbers that he had killed even during the Qing Dynasty. Moving on, come on. Again, the cause of the flood is all this large amount of silk being carried down and deposit at at the bottom of the of the riverbed and therefore the river overflows and then it it flood the surrounding over the centuries the chinese has been building higher and higher banks around the river as a result the riverbed itself is actually higher than the farmland nearby that has advantage and disadvantage the disadvantage is when the banks is broken 
then water come out, the water will not be able to flow back to the river because the river bed is actually higher than the than the nearby uh, lands, and therefore any flooding like this is disastrous. But during good days, it also means that people is easier to irrigate the land by just planting a hole in the river bank and the water come coming out because the river is flowing higher than the than the fields nearby. So there are advantage and disadvantage. So the idea the problem is how to control the amount of silt that's deposit on the river over the year. The river itself has actually changed its course quite significantly over the centuries. These are some of the uh, rivers, um, how river, how the Yellow River go to flow to the sea. So we see that in the Yuan's time in 602 BC, there's the Ping line up there. And then in the Northern Song time, which is the uh, red line, around 1048 to 1128 and then during the Han and Tang dynasty it is the, the other lines you see the yellow river have been changing its course quite dramatically and that is one of the problem of yellow river it, it is good in one sense but it's very bad in other sense whenever you change course means a lot of people die because it changed course due to the breaking of the banks. It carries about 1.6 billion tons of silk from the lost battle. So a lot of silk actually goes to the sea, but at the same time, there's still quite a large amount of silk being deposited. There's one estimate saying that about 34 kilograms of silk per cubic meter as opposed to other rivers like Colorado River or the Nile River. The Colorado River is only 10 kilograms per uh, cubic meter and now it's only one kilometer, uh, kilo, uh, kilo, kilograms of silk per cubic meter. So the Yellow River itself is carries a lot of silks Its average discharge rate is over 2,000 cubic meters per second. So it's a, it's a very fast flowing river. But due to the amount of irrigation, it has dried a couple of times in within the last 100 years. At the moment, the Chinese is trying to rejuvenate Yellow River by taking water from Yangtze River and let it pass go to Yellow River to let it flow on Yellow River using Yellow River as a uh, water transport system. So one of the plans um, the Chinese government is doing is let me go back to to the um, to the to the map. Uh, where's the map? Come on. It's not as fast as Come on. Hmm? What's happening? Looks like my my browser hand up. Come on. Let me see. Uh, yeah, okay, smaller first. And then I want you to navigate back. 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 Hey. Yeah. Okay. This is the map. The Chinese thinking of bringing water from the Yangtze River down, down here to a uh, region around Lanzhou. So they are going to duck a canal over here to pass some of the water from Yangtze River to Yellow River so that to keep the river flowing. So that was a, a plan. Okay, let me just go get back to the screen I was on. Come on. Very slow here. Sorry. Got 
Come on. Yep, that is what talking about the South Law Water Transfer Project. Bring some water to the western headwaters from the river. So traditionally, the Yellow River is known as the Mother River or the Cradle of Chinese Civilizations, but as well as China's Sorrow. It has been muddy all along. But uh, 2017, there is a report from Global Times that the Yellow River becomes clear. The whole Yellow River has lost about 70% of its settlements from the Laos Plateau at up between 2000 and 2015. So what had happened is that in the Laos Plateau, they started uh, vegetations. They put back vegetations on the Laos Plateau in order to protect the Laos Plateau. And by doing that, it reduced the amount of silk uh, flowing over the river, and therefore the river has less settlement. During the dry season, that means there's no rain, and therefore there's not much uh, Laos, is, Laos soil is being washed to the river. The river becomes clear. About 80% of the river has become clear. And during that time, it's carried only 0.6 kilogram of sand at that time. But there are people talking about whether that is ecologically sustainable because the Yellow River has been carrying so much silk for such a long time. It has developed its own ecosystem. There are um, fish aquatic uh, fauna, which depends on the silk to, to survive. So once the silk is gone, then this fish might not have the protection they used to have. So what happened then, we don't know yet. So at the moment, uh, people are still looking at what is the, the uh, implications of uh, removing all this amount of silk from the river. But on the whole, people think that uh, removing the silk at least will have less chance of flooding, and that's good for human anyway. So there are people trying to explain what happened. Some say uh, because of construction, engineering project, economic development and so forth. But I think the major contribution to that is covering the Laos Plateau with forests. So it cuts about 435 million tons of settlement over the last two decades. But as I said, some people say it's good. Some people is arguing that some of the uh, animals, the fish, on, on the in the river depends on the silk to protect itself. Once that's gone, how do what will happen? We don't know. Here is I think a a diagram of one of the dams. Uh, it becomes a tourist attraction every year. Uh, before the high season of the flood water, then uh the Electro, uh, electric, hydroelectric uh, stems are being the gates open to flush out all the silk that has deposited over the last year. So people started to come here to look at that. So let me see, is that a movie? No. So each year, thousands of tourists uh, go to one of the places that they always do this. Uh, sell land dam, dam where they are trying to flush out all the silk uh, collected over the year. So they open up the front gates and let that go. So this is the precautionary uh, purging that occur every year since 2002. Okay, so I'm not going to um, get everybody able to talk again so that we can have some question time. So I'm unmuting uh, everybody. I don't know whether there's a one 
one key rec- which I can do everybody, but at at, at the moment I'm doing one by one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so any questions? No. No. Yeah. Put in the forest. They're put in. Is that that going okay? What sort of were they trees that they were putting in, or just grasslands, or? Well, for for a uh, longer longer videos about that is you go online and search for green gold, green as in color, gold as in the metal, green gold. Uh, green this is gold. a this is a documentary uh, by a American Chinese. So the the American is a Chinese ethnic ethnic Chinese, but is brought up in in United States. Okay. He spent quite a bit of time in China documenting what happened in Laos Plateau. So the basic idea in the Laos Plateau, what they do is they uh, use the middle part of the plateau, the hills, as uh, farmland for the for the local people. So they, they ask the people to build the steps uh, in the middle part of the mountains so that they can plant crops, etc. On the mountain tops, they plant trees. Mm-hmm. Some of these trees are fruit trees, but again, most of them are native trees. So basically, in the lower half of the mountains are drillings and farmlands, as steps, and then on the top part of the mountains are trees. Okay. On the river beds itself, down there, then they will build very uh, low dams. The dams is only about one or two meters high, very low dams. So as the silk pass down and they will collect by the dams. So eventually the dams become a flat uh, farmland. So they farm on this uh, created uh, lands as well and then tuck a channel next to it for the main river to pass through. By doing so, they keep the water flowing pretty fast along the channel and create a farmland for them to use. Again, with this uh, building uh, vegetations, it changed the local climate. When the plateau was barren, there was no evaporation from the from the soil. Everything, the, the soil is just uh, bare earth, so it doesn't hold water. Now with vegetations, especially when the uh, when the mountain tops are forest, it holds a lot of water. So when it rains, the water is being held by the trees at the mountain top, and gradually released downwards through the mountains due to gravity. And as the water passing down, they will flow through all the steps that people created to farm, and so they are basically using. Uh, natural system to continuously uh, irrigate the the farmland in the lower half of the of the mountains. Mm. By doing that, they actually created moisture within the valley, and this moisture rises at night and condenses and becomes rain, and which flows to the top of the mountain, which is again absorbed by the forest hold there and then eventually go down and so they change the local climate quite dramatically with that change the the people's life actually improved i think by about 10 times just just remember at that time when before the the vegetations the people there was very poor now basically uh, they are farmers but the farmers the land is barren, so you can imagine how poor they are. So, at that time, each family usually keep one or two sheep and a little bit of farmland for to sustain. So they are substantive farmers. But after this um, revegetations, they first ask all the farmers to keep their sheep at home, not allowed to roam the hillsides anymore. Initially, they brought in the the feeds for the for the 
put in the founders for the for the ships. But eventually now they go up to the mountains to collect the grass, etc., to feed it to the ships rather than allowing to them to room in the in the uh in the mountains. And by planting fruit trees at the at the mountain top, they increase their income. And mm. by uh, making farmlands out of the hillsides into steps, they also increase their income. So the people there is now much better off, both ecologically as well as financially. Mm. It's surprising that it took such a long time for them to um, to do that. Yeah, because it is a large area. Yeah. Yeah. So it took them about 10 years. Yes, but after after centuries of having the same problem going on. Yeah, because at that time, centuries ago, they don't understand the problem. <laughs> <laughs> now with technology, with, with science, they understand it better. And then eventually they come up with a solution. And that solution is being repeated everywhere in China as well at the time, at this time. So interest, <laughs> people interested go to watch a documentary called Green Go. Okay, that sounds Green good. Green Go. Yes. Um, the other thing too, um, I, I saw in, in your film at the start, there are a number of big dams um, or hydroelectric um, arrangements across the river. I assume that they will have stopped the flooding um, in more recent time. Well, I think it's a lot, it said that the last one was in 1931, yep. um, a big flood. Um, and so all of the hydroelectric dams are there many? Or I think we just saw two or three. There are many. There are many. Uh, along the river, there are many, many hydroelectric the, the problem with the Yellow River hydrostatic, uh, hydroelectric dams are that there has a lot of silk along the way, and therefore they, yeah. they tend to limit the lifespan of the generators. Uh -huh. So the, the solution to that one is they, like the one we saw near the end, they try to uh, open the gates every year at the now there's another issue here which I, I think I need to, exp need to explain a little bit first now using the Yellow River for irrigation the peak of the demand is when people started putting the plants into the, the soil the planting mm. period which is spring so the peak demand is from March to about June, where people need a lot of water. But the natural cycle for uh, Yellow River, the maximum flow occurs in uh, July to about October. So the flow time and the demand time are different. The, the demand time is at the end of the dry season basically so after the demand the wet season comes and it will tend to flood so if we flood that means whatever you plant lo is lost mm. the dams now is able to regulate this one they will try to hold up the water during the high season and then when the demands come in they will open the floodgates and allow the water to flow and for irrigation as well as trying to uh, run off all the silk during that time. Mm -hmm. So that's one, one way of uh, preventing flooding. The second reason why Yellow River floods is the ice dam built up during the winter time. They are, the, the Chinese rivers originate from the Himalayas. So they are, they are cold regions. During the, the uh, Winter. winter time there will be a, a lot of snow and the there will be ice dams and and <laughs> my daughter say I'm too loud <laughs> <laughs> now so in the in the in the in the winter times the ice ice dams the ice will block the water flow okay so when the spring comes then it started melting and in the middle of the beginning of the summer it, most of them will melt and therefore it is when the yellow river has its maximum flow so the maximum flow start 
in middle of the year in July and something afterwards because the the tap of the weather because of that the one way to to prevent prevent the ice dam uh, breaking uh, flow uh, allowing a certain large amount of water flow is to um, destroy the ice dam area so they also send out uh, people to uh, in the um, upstream of the Yellow River to look for any ice dam that is formed during the winter and if there's a large ice dam there they will uh, use explosive to break the ice dam to prevent it to cause holds up a lot of water and then suddenly when the ice dam broke it the whole water rushed down so they they do that every every year now so that that also regulates the water flow Mm -hmm. Any more question? Albert? Yep. All that water rushing down reminded me of the major waterfalls around the world, mm -hmm. such as the Igasu Falls, the Igasu Falls in South America. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the. <laughs> Over the years, the the yellow river had already cut very deep into the landscape. So, you remember when we were watching the 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 film at the very beginning, we saw very deep cliffs along the the riverside mm -hmm. because over the years the yellow river had been cutting, 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 and so, um, in the upper region of the upper upstream of the yellow river, there's a lot of cliffs. Yes, that there, there are waterfalls along that way. And they are very muddy waterfalls, so they are not as pretty as, say, Nagra Fall. <laughs> Albert, yeah. the mouth of the river must silt up into a big delta, I would assume. Yeah, the delta. Is that correct? Yes, the, yeah. the delta is building up at around a couple of hundred square miles per year. Mm. So the the in the Bohai region, the the delta is actually building up is. The ball height itself is getting smaller and smaller. Oh, right. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. But in the last few years, when the water clears, then it seemed to shrink back a little bit. But over the years, the ball height areas all are built up by the uh, Yellow River Silk. And that's why the that is the China Plain, where the the um, man, Mandarin Plain, where it is one of the best food producing area of China. Mm. The the yellow silk the, the Laos is very rich and therefore mm. it is a very good soil for farming. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay. In if that's the case then I will end the meeting and then we'll see you next time next week. Great. Okay, thank you. And now uh, now I I know <laughs> now I know how to allow everybody in without using I'm meeting you, so people just come here anytime. So it won't happen like the big history blocking everybody outside. <laughs> <Next time. laughs> I will be set. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, yes. Can I suggest for people, uh, Joan? She has a window with bright light behind her, but she looks very black, dark. All oh, right. We look at our pictures. Choose our backgrounds a little. That's better, Joan. I can see you waving. No, I, generally, <laughs> I generally do it in another room, which is better. Yes. yes. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. Uh, and maybe we all, when we talk, we have um, less background noise. Maybe our volume has to be more uh, loud enough to hear you, but medium. Yep. Good suggestion. Feedback. Yep. And also the, the uh, earphones will cut that out too, I believe. Yeah. I... So, and someone there had a little upset with coffee and they were sorting papers and they come through like someone banging on the window. Here you go. I can only see half your up your face. Oh yes, I've got to hold it like this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll all okay. we'll all learn a bit from it. But yeah. That was very good. For, for our first time, Albert, that's excellent. Yeah, and that's, that's what wonderful. I Thank do, you. What I want to do what I wanna do is Give you a clap. See that in the yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Put All right. that up in the top right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> well, we are okay. learning, so next time we'll yeah. be better, and then eventually we'll get 
Yeah. Cut that. Okay. How, how many people all together today, Albert, on this one? On, on Zoom here is 14, and then concurrent, concurrent viewers on YouTube is 9. 9. All right. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I only see uh, four photos, including you, Albert. Maybe I can maybe I can shift this along. No, yeah. I only, only get four. Learn every time. We learn every time. Oh, hang yeah. on. I can smooth this sideways. So it's the yeah. plan. Yeah. Gilbert's. Simon Wong. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe there's a bit more to learn. Yeah. We, right. we, were, we were learning. Okay. Oh, I see Joe, Joe Domenko's name there, Judith Benz. But they, no picture with them. Yeah. Peter, <laughs> maybe they haven't got their camera on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Albert. Thank you. Next week. Thank you. See you next week. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, Albert.